Hello, good evening, lovely people, and welcome to Health Coach YouTube channel. My name is Moses, your health coach. Our discussion for today is going to be solely centered on the anesthesia machine. If this is your first time of visiting this channel, I'll plead with you to hit the subscribe button in order to gain access to our subsequent YouTube videos. So now that you have beautifully done that, we're not going to waste much of your time. We are going to delve straight into the subject. So as you can see here, this is a typical anesthesia machine, Mindre A5. Yep, as you can see it boldly written here, Mindre A5. So this anesthesia machine comes along with its cardiac monitor that is beautifully projected on the right side. It is currently off, so first of all, we are going to turn it back on before we proceed. So, whilst waiting for it to boot, let's talk about some of the features or some of the key components of the anesthesia machine. So, these giant objects that you see right here are the vaporizers. These are the vaporizers. And we have a lot of anesthetic, I mean, agents that we actually put in this. But these particular two are halotene and isoflurane specific. So this is hal halotene and this is isoflurane. We have our ventilator right here. This is the reservoir bag. We have our APL valve that can be used to increase airway pressure and also to reduce the work of breathing. We have a switch to automate or turn the machine to a manual position. We also have our breathing circuit position here. So this right here is connected to the endotracheal tube that helps in the delivery of oxygen to the patient. Okay. So before we go to we go back to anesthesia machine, let's talk about the carbon dioxide absorber. This canister you see right here is the carbon dioxide absorber. What it does specifically is that it, as the name suggests, it absorbs carbon dioxide from the exhaled air coming from the patient. This helps to prevent patient from rebreathing. The carbon dioxide that has already been expired. This is an interesting feature of the anesthesia machine. It is called a sample line. As you can see, it is connected to the machine here. What it mainly does is it helps record the amount of carbon dioxide that is being exhaled by the patient. This helps us to know whether the patient is ventilating well or not. So it is actually, it gives us a clue of the patient's end-tidal carbon dioxide. Okay, so as we can rightly see on the screen, we have hardware, we've passed on hardware, ventilator pass, valves pass, sensors, flow meter, gas supply, power supply, AG model. This shows that all these features are in good working condition. So we'll just move ahead to continue with the calibration of this machine. Okay, so check the following. These are instructions that are going to guide us along um, our calibration. First, ensure gas supplies are okay. Yes, we have our gas supplies, okay. Ensure breathing tubes are correctly connected. These are the breathing tubes. They are correctly connected. Connect the gas model outlet to the sample gas return port or waste gas disposal system. Everything is right here. Empty the water trap on the breathing system and ensure the condensate drain valve is tightly closed. It is already done. Mount the AGSS correctly and ensure the float is between the minimum and the maximum lines. That is also already done. Check the absorber canister to ensure the carbon dioxide absorbent is 
adequate and unsaturated. So this carbon dioxide absorber is adequate, as you can rightly see, and it is the color indicates that it is unsaturated. So we are right on it. Check the vaporizer to ensure it is adequately filled, adequately filled, and the filler port is tightly closed. So this is the gauge that will help you to know whether your um, whether your vaporizer is adequately filled. So you can see that the level is in the middle. It shows it is adequately filled. Honestly, or as a matter of fact, it's not supposed to go below the middle line. So as long as it's within the middle section, it means that it is adequately filled. And it is tight. Yes. It is all tight. There's no room for leakages. Ensure the O2 flash or oxygen flash is functional. So this is the oxygen flash which has been strategically positioned. So how do we know if it is actually, I mean, um, functional? Upon pressing, you can see the reservoir bag is being inflated. Good. So it is actually functional. So we are going to continue with our calibration. Now, these are instructions. The first instruction is to seal the white piece as shown. Okay, so it is showing us where the white piece is. It is showing, showing us this. So this is, it. this is the white piece. And we have occluded it well. Second instruction is ensure that the sample line port of the breathing circuit is occluded. So as I indicated earlier, this is the sample line port and it is also occluded. Third, thirdly, we are, we are to adjust all flow meters to zero. Okay, so these are flow meters. All have been adjusted to zero. Set the auto or manual switch to the auto position. So as I stated earlier, this is the switch. This can be moved to the auto position and to the manual position. And this is indicating or telling us that we should switch it to the auto position. So that's exactly what we are going to do. Yes, to the auto position. All right. Now, press the O2 flash button to completely fill the bellows. This is the bellow. So these are the, this is the ventilator bellows. So we are going to flash the O2 button for it to be completely filled. Good. So these are the bellows that you see right here. Good. Now, select continue to proceed with test. So we are just going to continue. We wait patiently whilst test is in progress. It's very simple and everybody should be able to do this. And it's very necessary for it to be done before every case. Yeah, we're going to learn why it is important to do that. Okay, so automatic circuit leakage. We've actually passed, so we are on point. I mean, we are on course, actually. I beg your pardon, we are on course. We're going to continue with our calibration. Okay, so we have different instructions here too. Adjust APL to 50 centimeters of water position. So this is our APL. We are going to adjust it to 50 centimeters of water. So it is adjusted to 50. Adjust all flow meters to zero. And then again, flow meters have all been adjusted to zero. Install the manual bag, otherwise known as the reservoir bag. It is firmly installed, as you can all see. Set the auto or manual switch to the manual position. So then again, we are going to move the switch from auto position to the manual position. Press O2 flash button until power or PAW gauge value is between 25 and 35 centimeters of water. So this is the 
PAW gauge. So we are going to press the oxygen flash until this gauge is between 25 and 35 centimeters of water. So here is the O2 flash. So I'm going to be pressing it while the camera stays on the PAW gauge so that we stay within our limits. So here we go. So you see the gauge is moving. Okay, let's let's put it on 30. Okay. So what do we do again? We press continue. Test in progress. This is so simple and so beautiful. So while we wait patiently for our test, let's take a look. Let's take a look at our theater. Every theater is supposed to have an anesthesia machine. And an anesthesia machine is a requirement for every theater or every surgical theater. So manual circuit leak test pass. So that is good. So adjust APL valve to spontaneous position as shown and select continue to proceed. So we are done with our calibration. So we are adjusting it back to the SP, that is spontaneous position. And then let's press continue. Okay, so we are done. We are done. It was simple, right? So this is on standby. In order to move from standby to begin your case, you hit the button and then you have it here. You can see that the flow meters have been um, digitalized. So this is oxygen. Let's turn the oxygen flow meter on. You can see everything is digitalized. This is how beautiful it is and everything is displayed on it. This is where we have the end tidal carbon dioxide displayed. This is our pressure peak, plat and peep. We have the tidal volume, minutes, ventilation, and the respiratory rate, everything highlighted here. This is where we do our calib uh, calibration and other aspects. Ventil ventilation modes, we have the VCV, we have the SIM view, we have the PCV and water view. So it wasn't difficult. This machine comes along with a mouse pad for actually setting, doing any setting that you so desire. It is so simple. You can easily move it from the adult component to pediatric, infant, and what have you. So, this is the end of our discussion for tonight. I hope you enjoyed it. And up to now, if you still not hit the subscribe button, I'll kindly plead with you to do so. Catch you some other time. Bye-bye.